Hello everyone. I know it's been a minute since we've done one of these talking head videos. Please excuse the mess. I am still in the middle of like fixing the wiring on the computer because my power supply died. But I thought it'd be cool to do one of these videos um, and sort of start a, a little battle in the comment section because this is going to be a uh, slightly controversial video. Um, but the basic premise of the video is uh, I've seen one too many posts on Reddit, which I really need to stop using, but I also hate myself, so I probably won't. Um, where people are like, hey, I want to use React. How do I use React with Rails? Uh, I know there's like an API solution and I know that there is a general solution where you just put it inside of Rails and nine out of 10 comments will just be like, you're a dummy, go use Hotwire instead or Stimulus and Turbo. So today I thought I would play devil's advocate, which is actually like the rest of industry advocate. But for some reason in the Rails community, it turns into being devil's advocate when you state things that are like pretty obvious to the average observer. So we're going to do that today. Now, before I start, I just want to say you're probably going to be upset by this. And if you are upset by this, I want you to remember that if you go down there, you can hit the dislike button on the way down and then leave your angry comment. Um, both of those will help the video because it's engagement and YouTube doesn't punish me for dislikes or negative comments. So like, just keep that in mind. You're helping out by disagreeing with me. Anyways, now that I've finished baiting everyone, let's talk about some cases where you might want to use React over Hotwire slash Stimulus slash Turbo. Okay, so I get DMs all the time on Twitter, on uh, like, I think even Facebook, uh, Discord, and Instagram. I don't use Facebook, but like even there I see DMs sometimes where people find my, my account. Um, and people will ask me, Dean, how do I use React with Rails? And every single time I've had that question, not once have I gone, you shouldn't. I'll just say, I think I have a tutorial on that. Uh, let me go check. And if I don't have one, I'll go make a video. So I made two videos like this week or last week where one was the import maps approach for React, uh, where you don't have any JSX because import maps are cringe. And the other one was the like JS bundling gem solution where you use ESLint, I think. Uh, and that one does have JSX with React. And both of those are bundled into the Rails app. It's like this super cool monolith that everyone uh, that follows DHH would love. And the rest of the industry would just sort of like scream in horror at. But sometimes that's what you need. Um, the other situation is someone will say, hey, I need to use React as an API, uh, or I need to use React with Rails as an API. Uh, do you have any tutorials for that? And I have a couple. Uh, I've even covered some basic like authentication stuff, but generally authentication with Rails as an API is just like one of those things that like the industry does and everyone else is just stuck like twiddling their fingers trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, but I do have like a doorkeeper tutorial that does cover it fairly well. Um, so I'll get these like direct messages where people are like, hey, uh, how do I use React with Rails? Or how do I use Vue with Rails? Or how do I use Svelte with Rails or whatever? Uh, and I'll sort of try and help them approach the problem because I'm not a fan of just going, you're dumb, you shouldn't use this. And that's like nine out of 10 replies on Stack Overflow or Reddit. So here's sort of like the, the basic idea that I see. You can either throw it into the same repository inside of Rails. You can throw it into the different repository and then like do a sub module maybe into Rails with like a sub Git repository or whatever, which is kind of weird. Or you just throw it into an API and then you either leave it in that repo or you put it in another repo and just like break them up or even like sub module them or whatever. So there's like a couple different approaches. Um, generally, if people are messaging me, they want to either use React as an API or with an API, or they need to put React into Rails specifically for like an interview or for work or something. Generally, if people are using it for their own purposes, they're totally fine with the API thing. But okay, couldn't they just use Hotwire? Yes, if they're working on their own project, they could, uh, but they also don't have to. They're not obligated to use Hotwire. Maybe they're trying to get a job in the industry, in which case I would personally use React because look at the market share of React versus Rails as a whole and then understand that like the stimulus portion of Rails is a subset of that Rails market share. Like you're talking about Rails getting a tenth of the traffic that React does, and then Stimulus being like a tenth of the traffic that searches for Rails include. It's just a little strange. Um, 
In that case, I would advise them to use React instead. If someone's interviewing for a company, they really can't just say, I don't wanna, if the guy says, or the girl or whoever says, uh, use React, like you have to. You either use React, you just storm out of the interview, or you try and tell the interviewer, I'm not gonna use React, I'm gonna use Stimulus or Hotwire instead. At which point the interviewer would probably say, okay, I think we're done here. <laughs> So like you don't you don't really get a choice there, um, and then let's say you use like stimulus in an interview, but then you start working there, and then they're like, hey, uh, it's great that you know Hotwire, but we need you to use React for this project. Again, you can't really say no. You can try and disagree, but if you want to keep your job, ultimately, if they say you have to use React, you're going to have to use React, and you can make the argument that Hotwire is so much more efficient than than React. But it's not, not in all cases. Again, a good senior developer will always say it depends. And here's why it depends. Let's say your company has uh, 13 different projects that they manage. They're all React based. You now have a two or maybe let's be generous. Let's say you have like a four week deadline to create a single page application for Rails. Uh, and your boss goes, hey, I need you to use React because we already have a storybook full of React components that are completely styled and set up for this. And you go, okay, I'm gonna use React. Or you can say, uh, no, I'm gonna use view components instead because I wanna go that way. Or I wanna use stimulus instead because I wanna go that way. So you go through like maybe, let's say you work 40 hours a week, you're salaried and you just put in a free 40 hours to the company because you just really wanna use Hotwire uh, for this solution because it's better than React. So you go through, you recreate all those React components that your company uses and you might think, oh yeah, it's just a couple buttons, that's easy, but don't forget there's like all the styling and stuff. So you gotta go through and make sure all that works. You gotta make sure it's tested and all of that other stuff that comes with like building an actual application. And then after you're done with building that actual application with Hotwire, which you've hopefully cleared with your boss, uh, you, you then have to have the weird discussion with your boss uh, every time a update happens to the React frameworks. Uh, because again, you have like your whole storybook in React, and then you also have this storybook for React or for Rails components where you're like, all right, uh, listen, Jeff, I'm gonna need to block out some time this sprint to go update the Rails view components or the stimulus uh, because we didn't update to the color of the buttons in all of the React uh, components and those don't carry over to the storybook components. So I'm gonna have to like go update that again. And then that's just like this overhead for no reason um, that the company might not have wanted. <laughs> Again, they could have wanted it, in which case you're totally justified in using it. But like a lot of the time, companies just don't want overhead for maintenance fees if they can avoid it. And if you already have 13 projects using React, there's no sense in using like Hotwire Stimulus for this one or View Components and adding that overhead unless you're like trying to migrate all of your stuff over that way, in which case you have to assume that all of the projects are using a like Rails application and stack for this, which isn't always the case. I've personally worked on projects before where the front end bounces between like three different back ends and they're not always like a .NET back end or a Java back end or a Rails back end. They, they can switch between them all. So again, it depends. All of these things depend on the scenario you're in and just blanket saying Hotwire is better isn't gonna work. It's fine if you like Hotwire and Stimulus, but you shouldn't be telling people, hey, uh, just do what I tell you because I'm right. Because you're not. You're, you're not always going to be correct if your answer to it, you are a tool in search of a problem versus a like problem in search of a tool. It doesn't make a lot of sense to just try and shoehorn everything into the Hotwire approach because that's the cool Rails thing. A good example of this, remember Action Cable, that like super cool thing that happened in Rails 5 that was gonna change everything? Yeah, it still isn't used in production by people because it still has open tickets. It's still kinda not great for performance. So people just use any cable instead. No one's running around saying, you should be using Action Cable because that's the DHH sanctioned approach. If you don't use Action Cable, you're big dumb. Like no one's doing that. 
So why is it that the thing with with hot wire and stimulus? Personally, I wouldn't use stimulus for any of my projects because I can't trust it to still work in like six months. I can't trust Rails to not just reinvent the wheel and decide actually uh, a monolith approach isn't good. Or um, I, I don't like stimulus. I'm gonna go back to CoffeeScript or one of the other like 20 different solutions we've had. Uh, so like in that sense, it's already strange to me, but then I'm never gonna be like, you have to use React. You have to use Vue. Like if you want to use stimulus, go for it. But like, I don't have a horse in this race. You guys are just being kind of mean to the people asking how to do stuff. Why do you think I made that Firebase tutorial? It's because someone was literally cussing someone out for needing to use Firebase. And then they were like, yeah, the, the customer needs us to use Firebase. I can't tell the customer that they're dumb they they have a firebase set up that they need us to connect to like it made no sense to me so i made that video and i was like super upset the entire time uh because like it's just unnecessary i don't know why everyone needs to be so mean jaded and like tribalistic in their defense i get it rails is not a popular framework ruby is ranked like number 16 on the list of popular programming languages javascript continually ranks in the top one with its 30 40 50 different frameworks i think even at this point fireship has made a, a javascript framework as like a meme maybe but i think he's actually using it for his like course website it is scary that javascript is the better framework right now in terms of like overall market share but that doesn't mean you should be afraid of it and give bad advice and be mean to people. You can say to the new dev who's like, hey, I wanna use React with Rails. Is that possible for my side project? You can go, well, yes, it's possible. There is another solution that's built into Rails, which is Stimulus Plus Turbo, formerly known as Hotwire, except from like other places that still call it Hotwire for some reason. Um, you can tell them that exists and that that's an option, but then also like maybe answer their question and like try and help them because, or at least try to understand them because they might have a reason for asking that question. Like maybe they just know React and they want to get something done relatively quickly. They don't want to go learn stimulus or turbo or all that other stuff. They just want to have an API with like CRUD stuff and log in, log out, and they want to use Rails because it's a good tool for that because of the dash dash API command. But yeah, I don't know. Like there's deadline issues. There's customer requirements. There's your boss just wants to use it requirements. There's the person just wants to use it requirements. There's so many different reasons why you would use React over Hotwire Stimulus Turbo. And you can make the argument that Stimulus and Turbo are just objectively better, but they're only objectively better in the sense that like they might be the better built-in Rails solution if you're building a project from scratch and you have a enough time to use the built-in project from scratch. In that case, it's the better solution. In other cases, it can actually depend. You can say there's overhead costs that'll come with it. I have to remake the components we have. Or like you can go the other way. You can say, we're not gonna use React because we already have all these Vue components. We're not gonna use Vue or Svelte because we we can't afford to have that overhead of like a whole separate application we need to maintain. We'd rather have it in the monolith. That's valid. It's just, it doesn't make sense to just have an all encompassing, it's the best solution. Because if it was the all encompassing best solution, I wouldn't get direct messages on a weekly basis from people asking, how do I learn React? I need it for a job interview. They're not asking about Hotwire and Stimulus. I'm sorry, but no argument is going to make that go away. <laughs> you can just tell all the junior devs to stop using Rails. Don't go interview with those companies. But some of them are talking about like, literally going from being homeless to having a well-paying job. I've, I've had this, this exact conversation with someone where they said, I got off of the street into a home because I used React and Rails and your Rails videos were helpful. 
I don't think it's a good argument to tell them to not go for that job because the person wanted them to use React. I, I just don't. And you can yell at me in the comments all you want to get this in front of everyone that sees it, but I just don't see that being an acceptable reason to tell people not to use React. But I just don't see your discomfort with people using React instead of the built-in solution when it's a requirement as a reason for them to not use React. And that's not everyone. That's probably the minority of people. But if I see one more of these Reddit posts, um, I'm gonna be like a little bit upset for the rest of the day. I'm probably gonna go to bed thinking about how I could win that argument. But whatever, I just, I, I wanted to talk about this because it's, it's just one of those things where it has come up so much. It's on every single React video I do now where if there's always someone who's like, you shouldn't use it. There's people who ask, why should I use React? And every time I'm like, well, here's my ideas. And then they go, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm still gonna use stimulus. I'm like, okay, cool, you know, good for you. Then there's always that one person who DMs me and they're like, you're being toxic by teaching React. That's the wrong way. It's not the Rails way. I'm like, yeah, but I can still look myself in the mirror at the end of the day, knowing I help someone get off the streets. I'm not gonna even consider the fact that you're upset with me. I just wanted to make this rant. I know it's a longer video and it's kind of boring, but like people asked for more rants in the last rant about junior devs. And this one's also one of those things where it just constantly annoys me. So I thought I'd just talk about it. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully now you can sit there and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna use React or Vue or Svelte, or I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna use Hotwire and Stimulus instead. Which for the record, if you're making like a small blog app, you could probably just use Stimulus, it's fine. It, like, it doesn't matter. But um, if you know React or you wanna learn React because you wanna get a job as a React dev because there's like 10 times more jobs for React devs and they're not as like mean about hiring junior devs as the Rails community seems to be, then probably just use React so you can learn React while you learn Rails. Cause then we have someone who knows Rails too, who learned React, which I feel like that's a bigger win than not having someone learn Rails because we want them to learn stimulus. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Hopefully uh, you got something out of this video. It's like 3 a.m. So I'm gonna edit this and upload this because I'm kind of tired. Um, Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.